Final Cut Pro 11 is here, and one of the headlining features is spatial video editing for the Apple Vision Pro. You can capture spatial videos using either your iPhone 15 Pro, your iPhone 16, or iPhone 16 Pro. Editor Dylan here. You forgot to mention that you can capture it on the Vision Pro itself, which is, you know, kind of important. So, uh, yeah, that's... That's what this button here is for. So in this video, I'm gonna break down everything you need to know about spatial video editing in Final Cut Pro and where you can post it online for others to watch. To bring in your spatial videos, you'll bring it in like any other media. I'm just gonna push Command-I to bring up my import window and locate my spatial video folder. From there, I'll push import selected, and just like that, I have access to all my spatial videos. But the first thing you might have noticed is in the top left of each of these clips, there's a 3D cube icon. That icon indicates that these are spatial videos and will be treated as such once you've brought them down on the timeline. So how do we edit on a spatial video timeline? Again, very easy. I'm gonna push Command N to create a new project name. We'll just call it spatial video editing. Then this is where the main key difference is. Under your video formats, you'll change it from either 4K or 1080, whatever you're typically working with, and bring it down to this spatial stereo 3D. This is a new option only available in Final Cut Pro 11. Now that I've done that, you can see we have a resolution per eye and a frame rate. These are just like any other video settings, so a higher resolution will give you higher quality video. Of course, you do need to have video files that match that resolution to take full advantage. I'll leave it at the default for this video, and I'll also leave the frame rate at 2997. From there, we can push OK, and just like that, we've created a project which has access to spatial video editing. Just another really quick tip though, is if you don't know the exact settings that you want to work with down on your timeline, and you just wanna bring in your spatial videos and let Final Cut Pro do the heavy lifting, you can right click on any of these and select new project. And then you'll notice down here in the bottom left that it is using automatic settings which means it will automatically know that this footage is 1920 by 1080 at a 30p frame rate, and that just saves you all the guesswork. Now that my project is ready to go, I can start to bring my video footage down on the timeline. And again, spatial video editing is just like regular video editing inside of Final Cut Pro. So I could bring down this first clip, this second clip, we could bring down a whole bunch of clips all at once. Nothing has changed at this point. We can go in, trim up our clips as necessary. You can apply stuff like transitions if you want to. You can add all of your effects like color correction onto all of your clips just like you normally would. But what happens when we want to add a title? A title is typically in 2D and we're trying to bring it into a three dimensional video. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and add a title with Control T and we can see that that says title here. We could write in whatever we want and maybe I'll use this block text to make it pop off the screen. So we have this title and if I were to export this out right now, it would just be in the very center plane. It wouldn't be forward or backward. So what if you wanna to choose to have your title more in front of the video or more behind in the video? Well, that is where a new feature comes with spatial video editing. And this applies both to your clips and your title. So if you have, say, a title that you want to bring forward, we can go over to the video inspector and you might immediately notice this new stereoscopic option. Stereoscopic just means whether it's 3D or not. And of course you can disable that if you want to but we're gonna leave that enabled. Additionally though, you'll notice this convergence slider. And as I adjust it, we can see it's kind of shifting the text around, but it's hard to tell exactly what's going on. There's also this auto scale feature, which is enabled by default, and I recommend you leave that on. And you'll notice now that this text is in fact scaling as I drag that convergence slider but if I disable it, that text does not scale up or down. That's just because the text is either moving back in 3D space or moving forward in 3D space, and so it's adjusting its scale to compensate for the differences in that spatial 3D. And finally, at the bottom, we have the option of swapping eyes. Now, we're not gonna really notice a difference here with swapping eyes, because right now we're looking at it in a 2D experience. When I first heard about spatial video editing in Final Cut Pro, I was expecting to be able to use the Vision Pro in real time with Final Cut Pro to look at the spatial videos. While I don't think that feature is too far off into the future, unfortunately, it's not available right now. When you're thinking about spatial video editing inside of Final Cut Pro, 
think of it as a version 1.0. This is the baseline feature and there's going to be a lot more to come in the future. Apple just wants to make sure that it is working properly and working well for creative professionals. And from there, after they've laid the groundwork, they can continue to make it better. So how are we able to gauge how well the 3D effects are working in Final Cut Pro without them being tied directly into the Vision Pro? To create videos for the future, the Apple Vision Pro, we first have to go into the past. So Final Cut Pro now has access to a 3D stereoscopic anaglyph mode. To get access to this, you just need to go to the top right where your view is. Selecting that, we can scroll on down and you'll see show stereoscopic as. In here, we can choose to look at the left eyes version, the right eye or the hero eye, both eyes side by side, which looks just like this. And then you'll notice we have this anaglyph mode. And that just means that you can use these basic red and blue glasses to get an idea of how well the 3D effect is working. This is far from perfect, and I definitely would not do any sort of color grading or anything like that with these glasses on, but it can give you a good idea of how well the 3D effect is working in your video. Do this in small doses. I wouldn't do an entire editing session in this, but when you need to figure out how well this 3D text is working, you can turn it into this red and blue mode, and then you can drag up the convergence slider on it and get a good idea of how far that 3D text is popping into your face. Additionally though, with your stereoscopic videos, you can also adjust the convergence. So if you want to bring the two sides further apart or closer together, you can do just that. So now it's time to export our master creation. How do we do so? You'll simply just go on up into your share menu and then go down to Apple Vision Pro MVHEVC. From there, we can jump into the settings. We could change the video codec to be 10 bit if we wanted to. Make sure that spatial video is turned on. You can adjust stuff like the field of view. And finally, we can adjust the resolution per eye down here at the bottom. Once you're ready for that, you can push next and share it to wherever you want. I'm gonna go ahead and just share it to my desktop. Now that it's exported, we can go ahead and preview it. And of course, this footage is not going to look 3D because we're looking at a 2D screen. So now it's time to send this over to the Apple Vision Pro. And there's a couple different ways to do this. And to show you that, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the Apple Vision Pro on. So here I am in the Vision Pro, enjoying Haleakala around me. And we can see that we have successfully shared our video. I'll go ahead and close that out. Once you're ready to share your Vision Pro videos, you can go ahead and just right click on it, go to share, and from there you can select airdrop and I can just send it over to the Vision Pro. Another super great option is if you have a subscription to iCloud Drive and you have all of your photos synced, then you can go ahead and quickly see your Vision Pro videos as you add them to your photos library. But now you can see that as I've airdropped this video to my Vision Pro, I can watch it here. It's of course very hard to experience the 3D effect that this is giving, but it's such a cool way to experience your own videos. But another super cool way to experience these spatial videos is by sharing it online. And fortunately, Vimeo has actually just introduced spatial video on their platform. So you can upload your Vision Pro videos for others to watch and experience how they were originally shot. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.